And greetings, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome back to the ongoing adventures of uh, the great Patchy O'Hooligan. <laughs> Still alive. Uh, let's see if our uh, commands still work over there. Ah, command's working just fine. Uh, and everything else working. Looks like we are live on Twitch. Sound is sounding. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Oh, where were we? In another four days. Uh, we were poking around in the lab. Oh, that's right. I remember. I remember. All right. Let me uh, take a look at a few things while we wait for some folks to show up. Hmm. Kappa, Kappa. Hey there, big lad. Thanks much for the resub. All right, I think that gets me back to where I wanted to be. So, our gear is in pretty good shape. Got everything repaired at the end of the last episode. Um, so, yeah, we're poking around inside the uh, the new style lab. Not real fond of these. I'm not sure how long I'm going to stay in here, but we are going to stay a little bit longer. And um, I've, I've decided we're going to go run an errand before we go back inside. We're going to go do some things. How are we doing on our, our skills? We can arm block now. Cool. Um, I don't think I have any arm guards. Might have to think about that. But we got the skill for the arm block. We got that. We got that. I think we're just missing the level 5 skills. Yeah. The takedown and the assassinate. So unarmed and melee. Need uh, 5 unarmed for the takedown and 5 melee for the assassinate. All right, the unarmed is the one that's going to take me the longest because we're not doing a lot of unarmed fighting. So that one's going to take a little bit of actual concerted effort. The other one we'll get eventually just by continuously melee combating. Um, yeah, and we've got our primary weapons, combat knife and katana, both of which are good for ninjutsu. Cool. Still kind of curious if I want to get a quarter staff to give that a try. I'm not sure. I am totally not sure. When I hit a Zombo with a Bash 20 cut, Bash 20 cut 10 weapon, how does damage work? It works exactly as you would think it works. <laughs> it actually, I've mentioned a number of times when I evaluate weapons that I prefer to have single source damage weapons. And there's a reason for that. When you split the damage types, it treats the damage independently or the hits going in on the enemy. What I mean by that is you're essentially doing two different attacks. So you hit a zombie with a weapon that does bash 20, cut 10. First, it doesn't do them in any particular order, but it'll consider the 20 bash, compare it against the armor, reduce whatever damage the armor reduces, and then the rest goes through. And then it does the same to cut. So the cut damage will then also be checked against armor separately. So you end up with a double reduction because of the armor, depending on how much reduction it has for each type, bash versus cut, and so on. Um, so whereas a single source damage of 40, for example, if you had 10 points of armor protecting against that damage type, 30 points of damage would get through. But if you had it split 20-20, and it still had 10% or 10 points against both types, you'd lose 10 of each, and only 20 points would get through instead of 30 points would get through. So the total damage is 40 in both cases, but by having a single damage source, you're getting more damage past the armor because it's not being compared against both types. So kind of depends on what you're fighting, whether this is, makes a big difference or not. Um, but in general, I, if I have options, I tend to try to go with single high value damage on a weapon type. Um, so for example, on, uh, on Waifu here, 
we've got a pretty good distribution. It's mostly cut with a little bit of bash. So when I hit something, uh, I hit for five bash value. It gets compared against the armor, and if that's high enough to get past the armor, then great, I do a little bit of damage. Then it compares my cut value of 31 against the armor, redux reduces as much as it's uh, uh, rated for, and then the rest gets passed through. But because it treats them separately for the protection values, um, if you have it split in half or in some other uh, valuations, then you can actually get less damage in. One of the benefits, though, of having a multiple damage types is that if the numbers are high enough that you're penetrating regardless for a decent amount, it acts as two different types of weapon damage, so you don't have to swap out weapons as often. If you've got a weapon that does both bash and cut equally or near equally, then you can use it against both bash susceptible and cut susceptible enemies without having to carry a spare weapon around. So it's all circumstantial. Depends on what you're fighting, whether it's going to make a big difference or not. My personal preference, though, is to uh, have multiple weaponry to cover the various circumstances and have each weapon kind of specialize in one of the types. What's the Stardust stuff? <laughs> a lot of my inventory has been renamed by the audience. So we've got Gordon Stabsy, which is my combat knife. We've got Waifu, which is my katana. We've got uh, Stardust, which is just 5.56 five, ammo. It's one of my stacks of ammo. Uh, we've got... Uh, what else got renamed? Uh, Ziggy the Zig is my Sig 553. That's uh, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff's been renamed. They like to mess with me, so I'm constantly having to remember what they named something when I'm hunting for it in my inventory. Or especially if I put it back in my vehicle. How damage works is changing with armor changes. I'm not aware of any changes to how damage works. They are changing. The big thing they're changing that everybody should know about is the uh, the weak points. Uh, I did update to the most recent experimental, as I usually do, and uh, I didn't see any particular interesting things between Monday and today on the list other than more categories of enemies have been added to the list of things that have now been modified for the weak point system. I don't remember which kinds. I think Kevlar enemies and uh, one of the animal types, I think. I forget. But a uh, few more categories of enemies have now had the weak point systems implemented. Uh, so you have the uh, opportunity to hit them in weak spots with uh, weapons and arrows and, and so on uh, for additional damage. What's the longest time you survived? It's not really a, a real question. I can survive as long as I want to. There's there's absolutely no challenge to me just surviving. I die of boredom long, long, long before my ability to, to live <laughs> ever gets uh, challenged. So I, I think the longest I've ever managed to not die of boredom is, I don't know, a little over a year maybe? One seat or four seasons, but that was a long, long, long time ago, back before the time changes and the number of days in the season changes, and it was, it was a vastly, I mean, like, three, 3,500 gameplay hours ago. <laughs> it's been a ridiculously long time since I bothered to do something like that. That's why all my challenges are very focused with, usually with particular goals that I meet, and then I just abandon it and start a new one. Um... Staying alive is trivial, uh, almost in regardless of my initial starting circumstances. If I can survive the first hour of gameplay, I could survive forever, basically. So there's no real challenge to just staying alive. It would be intensely, insanely boring. Nobody was going to want to watch me do it, but I could do it. So, <laughs> but yeah, part of the reason I do the way, things the way I do is to stay interested in the game and as uh Cube Zero mentions to avoid burnout. I, I strictly uh, regulate my number of Cataclysm hours per week because I've, I've passed 4,000 hours played and uh, 
I, I came dangerously close to just totally burning out and quitting the game forever uh, a couple of times. And to avoid that, I strictly regulate my amount of hours played. And uh, that way I can kind of keep playing, keep people interested, keep teaching people how to play, and stay a part of the community. So, but yeah, yeah staying alive is not an in interesting endeavor. Now that mobs get different armor types, they also soak damage different. I I don't know. I'm not sure what your point is. I hit monster, it takes damage and falls down. That's the extent of my caring about how the systems work. I really, really don't care about the underlying uh, codes and math, typically. I, I play from a uh, an average player's perspective, and I try to educate from that perspective. I don't get into formulas much, or... Um, I try to stay away from the insane number of variables and min-maxing, that kind of thing. Um, other than basic, use bash on this monster, use cut on that monster. I, I don't really get that much more detailed and don't care all that much. Four hundred episodes of worm chopping trees and smoking meat. I don't know. I, I I keep I put a post up on Reddit about my desire to have a a game world setting that um, would separate the item spawn into item spawn and food spawn. <laughs> I'd like item spawns where I could set it to 0.5 is usually my default comfort spot. Uh, but I'd like to be able to set that separately from food. And by food, I mean, a lot of the responses I saw in that thread got way, way too detailed and nitty gritty. It's not my intent. Mainly, I'm just talking about the stuff that spawns in houses. Just the obvious stuff. I mean, just all the cans of pork and beans and butter and all that crap. I mean, there's just so, so, so much of it in the world that as soon as you have any idea of how to play the game, food becomes a total irrelevancy just because of the house food. Um, I'm, I'm very well aware of all the ways you can get food and you can hunt and you can smoke the meat and you can do all this crazy stuff, but that's what I want to get back to. I want to get back to needing to do that kind of stuff. The overwhelming, just massive supply of food in the game world just removes uh, nutrition as any kind of a survival factor in gameplay once you have any real idea of how to play the game. Um, which, whether it's realistic or not for the theme, uh, given all the other ways that we can change the gameplay and the st starting settings that aren't realistic in any reasonable way, I, I would really like to have a, a separation of item spawns and food spawns. Um, by making items super super rare just to control my food factor yeah i have less food to go get and make easily available but then i have to go on a four month uber quest to find a wrench because i've had to dial down the item scaling factor to 0 0.05 in order to make food relevant so it'd just be nice it's probably too complex to do and there's gonna be too many people arguing about how to do it and all that kind of stuff but uh you know I just posted it as a, hey, here's an idea I think would be cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, without getting too in-depth into all the various food options, really all I'm talking about is just let us dial back the food in the houses. Once they made those house changes where all of a sudden every kitchen in the world has 50 times more food than it used to have, it just really made all those other things that you do to get food pretty much useless. Even with evolution, and I know, I believe they're supposedly working towards more of the things will rot or be disappeared over time, but they've only got that built into a very few buildings currently. Or as time passes, they become looted, and their uh, their food status goes away. Grocery stores, uh, meal surplus, I, I forget the others. There's there's a small handful of buildings that do that, but just the, just the generic houses, they're, they're still there, and there's still just so much food in the world. <clears throat> where cut damage can be useful <laughs> there's a lot of tricks to the damage stuff and it gets really really complex and a lot of people don't understand it and I, I don't visit it very often in my discussions or my, my education stuff and I don't really pay that much attention to it myself honestly so I can't really be a, a nitty-gritty nuts-and-bolts expert on giving people advice on some of that stuff. But in general terms, I mean, cut is great against unarmored or soft targets. And certain of the damage types, their, their, their 
not strength weakness, but they're they're they shine the most at different skill levels. So pierce damage is one of the worst at low levels of skill, but one of the best types of damage at high levels of skill. So which one's better could be varying quite a bit by A, what you're fighting, and B, what your skill levels are. Because at very high skill levels, certain types of damage are actually better than other types of damage at low skill levels. So it's it's complicated. There's, there's a lot going on. <clears throat> All right, let's get out of that. <laughs> That's a lot more... I'm more chatting or talking right at the front there, but hey, people ask questions, I generally try to answer them. Cut is the most useless. Cut is not the most useless. Like I said, depends on what you're fighting, and it depends on uh, what your skill level is. Cut is awesome against certain types of enemies. As soon as you're going up against uh, armored enemies, it's one of the worst types. Ash and Pierce are better against armored enemies, so... You can't make a blanket statement like cut is the worst because it totally depends on uh, what you're fighting and depends on where you're at on the skill le skill levels. <clears throat> As always. Number one answer I give every time somebody asks me a question, well, it depends. <laughs> you gotta understand all the variations and all the circumstances and all the other things and I have to ask you 14 follow-up questions to understand your particular setup and circumstances, your character build, your items, your evolution settings, your likely opponents, your place in the world you're trying to go, <laughs> so that I can I can actually give advice that might mean something. Okay. Uh I talked earlier, I mentioned uh I was gonna I was gonna run an errand. We're gonna we're gonna go make some Molotov cocktails. I was thinking about it over the week, and it occurred to me that with the environment we're going into in this lab, a Molotovs would be a really helpful thing. I could just light them, toss them down a hallway, get a fire going, and then draw the enemies to me into the fire. <coughs> and or get rid of shock and uh, acid and those kinds of enemies, hopefully. So I think we're going to go get some Molotovs. Uh, I looked at the map, and we're just going to head on over to this bar, see if we can grab some bottles, and if we can find some vehicles. I think we have some vehicles here. We'll see if we can get some gasoline, and uh, we'll try to put together some Molotov cocktails and see if those will help us out. I assume that this lab is fireproof, meaning uh, starting a fire isn't going to burn the whole place down. Uh, it's true in the other type, the old type of lab, so we'll see. Is this why people like the cudgel at the start of the game? Cudgel is just an all-around, actually pretty good weapon. I mean... It's, it's, it's available from minute one to pretty much everybody, and it's actually a pretty decent weapon. So, <clears throat> quarterstaff is better than the cudgel. Yes, depending. <laughs> Speed of attack is pretty important. It's, it's, they're, they're different. Got different reasons for using them. I have a lot of people always raving about the quarterstaff, and I've never understood it. I've tried quarterstaff a number of times, and I just, I just, Never really got the uh, the big rage for it. <clears throat> Sling staff's interesting, and it needs to be reevaluated. I mentioned that I think last episode. How to hunt dragons? I can't help you with that one. The one time I went hunting dragons, it was um, it was a total shit show. <laughs> it was it was a broken ass shit show, is what it was. Uh. I got uh, I got feared from like two Z levels away while stepping into a deep puddle of water and I drowned because the dragon was fearing me from a Z level that I wasn't on yet <laughs> and uh, I couldn't move. So that's, that's my memory of my last dragon hunt. <laughs> What's the staff sl or sling staff? Staff sling is what it is. It's a uh, it's a big thing of wood with a sling at the end. It's a, it's a real world weapon. It's pretty effective. And um, it will double as a staff when they get into melee range. So you can you can use it for ranged combat, throwing rocks at things until they get close. And then without having to swap out weapons, you're going to immediately start using it as a staff. So, yeah. All right. So there we go. Uh, so, yes, more solution experimental. Nothing new other than some more upgrades to the um, uh, wound system. Our weak point system. Uh, let's go ahead and get uh, let's get the character moving. So I remember we had already gotten all my gear fixed up. 
Got my inventory sorted. It is two o'clock. We got just enough time, I think. Whoops, actually. Let's uh let's not do that. Where is my jerry can? Not Harry can. <laughs> it's southeast, so well, we'll just go wield. Uh wield jerry can. Rubber boots. Um main inventory for the moment. Where? Cat size. Activate. Cat size. No gas. There we go. Siphon. This one can hold, what, 25 liters? 20 liters? 20 liters. All right, so we're only at 8.6. A little more room. Um, We'll find out if there's zombies that close. Zombie and a skeletal juggernaut. a security van. I don't care. Still looking for that military plate arm military composite plate, aren't I? Alright, let's not mess with that. Run dear, run. Under 40 pounds I'm at 16.58 uh, that's probably good enough all right so we're just going to uh, hop on over to that building over there see if we can get some bottles and we'll head back to the lab and Got to put together some Molotov cocktails. Zombie hunter waiting for us, right? Oh, ah, <laughs> hunter and a predator. Well, that's not very fair. Um, yeah, that's that's downright rude. Hmm. Should probably test out some melee against the predator. Kind of uh, not a great time to do it. Let's see. 
Wait a minute. Why are you guys coming this way? I'm not close enough for you to hear me. You shouldn't be able to see me. They're heading not towards me. Alright, cool. We'll let them do their thing. Guess they're gonna go up and nom on some fish or something. Not sure what they're after. It'd be funny when they come rip roaring back this direction. Okay, I need space and weight. Space I got. I don't got a lot of weight, but we're not gonna be picking up a ton of stuff. Um get uh let's get waifu out. Really? Prussian blue in the garbage can? Hmm. Alright. Plastic, plastic, plastic. I don't need plastic. Glass bottle. Uh, I can't remember. Glass jars okay for Molotovs? Glass bottle? Full, full, okay. No, just glass bottles and glass flasks. No jars. You're not doing me much help here. V8. Sure, we'll have a V8. Overburdened. Yeah, we got a few. There we go. Even better. Three more. Forgot to, almost forgot to check the garbage. All right, unload. Fancy hobo. Load fancy hobo. Load gin. What are we up to? Eight? Eh, that'll be enough for the moment, I think. Don't see anything else too nearby. We could check, I guess, a couple of houses if it stays clear. Uh-oh. Hulking horror. Shadow Raptor? What the hell's a Shadow Raptor? Ah, it's behind a tree. <laughs> I can't see it behind the tree. There it is. Right there, it's funny. I, I, I could see it there. <laughs> Shadow Raptor, huh? Isn't that fun? So now we have uh, shade flying creatures. Hmm. All right. Um. zombie bottles glass bottle and lots of plastic it for the bottles huh one hmm Weird basement. Uh, I don't think I'm going to bother looking through the rest of the house. I'm not going to get bottles anywhere else. 
really all I want right now. Do I have 115? It's plenty. That's all I need, right? Gas bottles and rags. Yeah, I only need eight rags for the eight bottles. And uh, we'll need 4,000 gas. We're, we're okay there as well. All right, cool. Let's head back to the lab. Well, hi there, pile of enemies that came up behind me. Okay, uh, cat's eyes on our atomic reading lights and craft up some Molotov cocktails. Drop, we'll keep, uh, what, two, three on me? I don't need many at once, I don't think. Got one in my hand. Oops, forgot to unload the soy sauce. <laughs> Did it just drop the other? Yep. All right. So they're in the uh, the vehicle there. Uh, give me give me one more. We'll just carry two with me at a time. Yeah, it puts us we're we're up near max weight already. And now, the debate. Rubber boots or no rubber boots? <laughs> I'm going to say no rubber boots. Let's go with uh, Ziggy. Oh yeah, what are my skills again? We've been trying to work on a few. So we got our unarmed up to three. Um, we need melee five and unarmed five in order to get the last of the uh, ninjutsu special abilities. Size off. Looking a little messy down here. So that's what we've explored so far. Uh, we know there's a Skell jug hanging out somewhere down here. We just ignored him last time we saw him. Still don't have a really good way of getting rid of the Skell jug. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's go with uh, Ziggy for the moment. Hey there, Mr. Manhack. What, you're not going to try to hit me? It, it tried to hit me, but it stayed right there. That's kind of weird. Very weird. Some weird activity. I actually precise aimed on that, so a whole bunch of time went by and he just sat right there next to me. 
the entire time. That was weird. Yeah, it's my least favorite lab type, all right. Oh, that's right, Skitterbots. Now I remember. <laughs> uh, I believe I was going to try to go around and come at them from this side where I get longer range shots on them, but that means I'm going to have to clear up here. I'm a little nervous about going north of this hallway because if the Skell Jug comes up and cuts me off, then I might have a problem. Which, muta which mutation will we go? I have no idea yet. We're a long way from needing to worry about it. Although springtime is rapidly running away, so if it's something that uh, needs materials that are pre pre prevalent in springtime, we might have a problem. <laughs> We've only got, what, 10 more days of spring? So if I want, like, bird's eggs or uh, bird mutations or something. So I don't know. It's going to depend. I guess I could have just come in here and grabbed glass bottles. <laughs> we got a few. I think there's probably a million of them just sitting around in here. Um, oh crap, I forgot. The, I, which, which of the tools did we find? I think it was the analysis. I wanna say we found the analysis. from the south. Uh, we're not going to go that way. Scientists. Okay, so what's going on over there? Experimental lab bot, man hack. We know a couple of the other fun ones in there too. Fire. He's gonna get me. Yep, <laughs> stop aiming. No.
All right, so the robots are uh, trying to kill a pupating zombie crawler. That's why they're huddled up over here and they wouldn't move. Because they've got this guy. And they can't do enough damage to it because of its regenerate. So they're basically permanently locked to him as long as I don't get uh, adjacent to them. So I don't technically need to kill these. But I sure would like to. Retta, Glock. Oh, separation funnel. There's uh, tool number two. Ooh, a lot of zombies I need to smash in here. Oh boy. It's part of my it's part of why I don't like this these labs. There's just there's a million items, but nine hundred and ninety-nine thousand nine hundred and ninety of them are things you don't give a crap about. <laughs> so it's just a non-stop page after page after page after page of crap you don't care about or don't want, don't need, have no use. Um, we're going to kill them anyway. Fire. And, uh, let's try to kill him in melee. Come here, waifu. Alright, problem solved. Ash. Ash. And all the corpses are done. Back to Ziggy. So is there going to be something really rude inside that room? Because I think whatever's in there already broke through reinforced. Nope, it was a door. So that was easy to break. So it might not be too scary. Oh, it sits in one of those rooms. All right. Posted notes. Oh, micro centrifuge. Right, let's go grab the important stuff. Micro centrifuge, separation funnel. Now we're at three out of four. And we're a bit overweight. Um I have to go back around. Okay, so... Yeah, so analysis kit. That gets us the analysis of quality. The... Microcentrifuge has concentration. And a separation funnel has separation. Ah, crap. Oh, wait, concentration separation. We're okay. Uh, so that means I just need distillation. What are we trying to build? Nothing in particular. One of the ways we're trying to evolve or die is to uh, possibly go mutating. To do that, I need a whole lot of applied science, and I need the four tools that are necessary for crafting mutagens and purifiers. So I'm just making sure while we're in this type of lab that I I grab up the uh, the four tools. So we've got three of the four tools already. 
I'm trying to get it done, get as much of this place explored as I'm going to while the zombies have been uh, picked apart by the robots. Very common thing to happen in this these types of labs where the uh, there's so many man hacks and skitter bots and turrets and so on that uh, the zombies and the robots go to war. The robots usually initially win, so if you can time it right, you can come in and uh, finish off the last few robots and then uh, pulp all the zombie corpses and you don't have that many to deal with. Kind of depends, though, on your luck of the draw and whether you get one of these labs that have a bunch of the uh, electrical vegetation creatures and things like that. Let's head back up this hallway. Uh, actually, did I finish looking at this room? Get the uh, headlamp back on. Yeah, just so much stuff I don't care to look at, man. Another UPS. Uh, I might grab one more UPS. Obviously, it's also a place you can get a decent amount of uh, bleach. But I also don't have the recipe books for uh, mutations. We're missing quite a bit. Uh, I want to say this was bathrooms? No, nope, not this area. Good old micro centrifuge again. Don't need that one. Scientist, we don't need to shoot him. Let's uh, use Gordon Stabsy. Post-it notes actually do anything? Are they activatable? Nope. Dim lights before feeding for light show. All right. Plastics and polymers. There's the bathroom, I remember. <laughs> hydrogen tank. Not the hydrogen tank that you need for the special stuff, though. Hmm. Hmm. All right, well that's that. That's it for the northern or northwestern corner. It's not one of the ah, oh, my favorite taser hack. It's on the other side of some glass, though. Screw you, taser hack. I love it. Glass doors, but it's blocking the light. There we go, fractional distillation apparatus. Okay, we got all four of them. I have no space for the fractional distillation. Right. Uh, put Gordon Stabsy away.
We'll carry it on out. So, now I don't need to keep track of which ones I've got. We got them all. But one last thing on the list. Um, yeah, this is not one of the better labs to, uh, to move around in. It's just going to be repeat of the same stuff I've seen. There's... Where is the area? I can't remember on this this design. It's been too long since I came in here. Um, yeah, I can't remember. I don't want to drag a torch around popping open these random doors. Neither Steak Jones. Yes. User hack from the other side. Close door. Back off. Get Ziggy out. Yeah, now he's waiting for me here. Um. Whoops. Whoa! Closed door. <laughs> God, I hate those things so much. So ridiculously fast. I got a similar problem up here in that he'll see me. Oh, there's multiples. They'll see me. And I have to open this door to get to here. And then they'll be stacked up. And I won't be able to uh, shoot them from range. Then I have to circle all the way back around. I hate taser hacks. Well, hey there, Boomer Glutton. Hmm. Spewing bile. And yeah, we'll back off. Huh, got me. Activate saline. So, we know what's in here. Super happy fun time. And I want to say this is another bathroom area, or is it over here?
Subplane 117 RA likes prime numbered calibration pings. Isn't that exciting? Run. Did he get me? <laughs> you got so many things going on. Did not get me. Cool. All right. Let the husk loose on the taser hacks. <laughs> uh, that'd be a little hard to manage. And I really, really, I, I hate uh, taser hacks with a red hot burning passion. <laughs> I'd rather face the uh, incandescent husk than the taser hex. Uh-oh. I was looking at my weariness. Let's see. A couple more little guys. Come to me, little guys. I'll fight you here in the sludge. Silly zombies. Heelys. Which one of them were wearing Heelys? Whoops. Zombie Night Stalker's arm hits your right arm with a glance off your armor. <laughs> you block a little of the damage with your waifu. That's a fun one to come into the corner with. Especially being uh, two bars down on stamina. Hmm. If I can get to the window, flip around, and put him in this corner, we'll be fine. So all I really need to do is run, slip around the corner, and then hang out here until I get my stamina back. So, um... He's too dumb to go around, so unless he's strong enough to break that, just in case he is, we'll we'll back off a bit. Get Ziggy out. Hey there, mad scientist. What do you what do you got? You got something fun? Tiny but razor sharp blade and one shaking hand. All right. Research you has stared too long into the abyss. Hmm. Just not, I, I'm fairly sure that that Night Stalker cannot break this reinforced glass, but if he does it while I'm meleeing these guys and I haven't recovered my stamina, things could get bad pretty quick. So we should probably not melee. Let's use our bullets. I think he would have broke it by now if he could. Yeah, we're okay. <laughs> Boy shorts with a scalpel. All right, Night Stucker. I want to pull him out into the, the goop as well. That'll slow him down and make it fairly easy for me to uh, shoot him. Fully reloaded here. Oops. Reload. E. Whoops. He's around. That's fine. I want him to step over and then straight up so I can be shooting him while he's in this. Let's, uh, we'll back off to here to make sure he comes through there. Come on now. E By Night Stalker. Let's see. 